Okay, yarn. You're going to have to convince me why I should keep you in my stash. What are you made of? What can you do for this organization? Some of you aren't going to make it past the first cut. So bring your best pitch. Okay, go. I've got an extra large martini today and I'm going to need it. Because I'm going to start this journey in 2024 of sorting through and curating my stash, which means I have to make hard decisions about what I'm going to keep and what's got to go. <laughs> so, cheers! <laughs> uh, I'm Nicole. This is Nicole Knits Under the Influence podcast, and this is episode 10. Um, although it's actually, it's episode 10, but it's also part one of my 2024 journey of curating my yarn stash. Now, I, I first, I want to start off by saying I do not want to guilt anybody into having to do anything. So if you are happy with your yarn stash as is, that is fantastic. I have been happy with my yarn stash as it is for a long time. But lately, I've been starting to feel like um, uh, not, I, I don't feel guilty. I never feel guilty about my yarn. That is a non-starter. But I have been feeling like um, a little overwhelmed with my yarn stash and that perhaps I have a lot of yarn that I'm really probably never going to use. And I want to free up space. Um, I want to contain my whole stash on the wall behind me and I want to be able to shop from from that stash on the wall behind me and not have to go scrounging around looking for where the rest of my yarn is. Now what prompted me to this was my lovely wicked stepmother, not wicked, got this book uh, in early December and I was visiting her house and she showed me this book. I was like, oh, that is cool. So this is The Joy of Yarn by Marie Green, who is Olive Knits. <clears throat> and you may be familiar with Olive Knits. She designs beautiful sweaters. <laughs> and uh, I th is there a yarn line? I'm not sure. Oscar, will you tell me if there's a yarn line for olive knits or not? I can't remember. <laughs> I think there is. <laughs> oh my goodness, this is sad. Okay, um, anyway, this book is about a stash solution for curating, organizing, and using your yarn. So we are going to go through this process. It's going to take a few episodes to make this happen. There's, um, there's a lot involved. <laughs> in getting this done. So we're going to start here. Uh, first thing I want to talk about is what I'm wearing. This is my loungewear. Um, this is the Bloom sweater by Julie Hoover. I knit this, uh, I finished it early on in my series of um, finishing my whips back in quarter uh, four, quarter third, quarter <laughs> Of, just, um, of 2023 from September to December I finished a whole bunch of whips that I had on the go. This was one of them. I finished it early in that process. Let's go with that. And uh, I, I wore this for a reason because this sweater is actually a good example of stash busting which is one of the things that we will talk about in this series of going through my stash. So um, I incorporated three different yarns that I had in my stash to knit the sweater. Um, I had this um, Manos del Uruguay, and I, I, I have two of them still marled together here, but I'll pull one apart. Um, I had this kind of oyster colored uh, Manos del Uruguay yarn, that is called Serena. Uh, that is a blend of baby alpaca and Pima cotton. 
60% alpaca, 40 Pima cotton. It is scrumptious. So I had this. This alone was not going to make the weight I needed to knit this sweater. So I marled it with a lace weight blend of baby alpaca and bamboo. This is 80% baby alpaca, 20% bamboo. This was made by Northlight Fibers who do not mill and sell yarn anymore, sadly. Um, it's a beauty in this green. So I marled those two together into this, which is what you see here. And that got me the gauge I needed to knit the body of the sweater. And then I decided, just because I'm me, <laughs> To break it up a little bit with some color blocking. So I decided I would do the sleeves in this gray uh, cashmere. This is 100% cashmere from uh, Sport Weight from Pepperberry Knits. Pepperberry Knits, 100% cashmere um, for the sleeves. And then the collar, I like to do edgings. So the collar and the bottom, I'll just stand up for a sec so you can see that this is Kind of a swingy, loose, A-line, very comfy sweater. Um, I don't often knit sweaters uh, with a, a kind of high round neck like this, um, but I got quite fond of it over time. <laughs> so I'm, I and I wear it a lot. I, I'm, and it, you know, I love it when I wear my knits. I, I love it when a sweater project is successful enough that. I'm wearing it. So um, cheers to successful sweaters. Now, um, and then I also decided to break up because of the, the way the sweater is knit kind of from here around to the center back and from here around to the center back in two body pieces, I decided that I would do the edges of each of those big body pieces in the gray so that when I sewed them together, because there's a seam down the center here, that the gray would make a line in the front and center back. There, isn't that cool? Anyway, these are the kind of fun things you can do uh, when you're ready to <coughs> stash bust. And we'll talk lots more about stash busting ideas when I get to that part of the journey. So. Here's how the journey is going to go. First thing we're going to do is I'm going to take you on a tour of where I keep all of my yarn stash. Step one, which will happen in the next episode, is pulling every piece of yarn that you own, every length, every scrap, every tiny ball, every skein, every everything, and putting it all in one place. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> that, that's going to be a bit of a task and it's going to be very overwhelming to see it all together in one place. However, Marie says <laughs> that's what you have to do so that you can sort it and organize it properly and really get the big picture of the yarn that you have. Um, then once we've got it all in one place, we're going to, um, I'm going, I'm going to sort it she gives you in the book lots of different options for sorting it and how you're going to organize it back into your stash. Um, I prefer to sort mine by weight first because most often, you know, I've got a pattern I want to knit. I'm going to go shopping. I'm always going for the weight first. So weight first, then color, and then I'm going to pull out all the things that I already know I'm putting aside for projects and put them together into projects into some kind of containers. Um, everything, like I said, is going to go back onto these shelves and nowhere else except I'm going to keep two bins and I'll, when we do the yarn tour I'll show you the IKEA bins that I have under my cutting table. I'm going to keep those two bins for um, single balls that don't work on the wall and scraps and things like that because I have reasons for wanting to keep little yarn scraps. And then um, containers. So how is it going to be in the shelving? Is it just going to be thrown in as is? Or am I actually going to divide it up into different kinds of containers? What kind of containers am I going to put the projects in? Um, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> so we'll, uh, we'll think about that when we get there. And then I 
um, inevitably I'm going to have a lot of yarn that needs to be rehomed. And depending on the kind of yarn, what it is, the value, the, you know, the usability, the etc. Um, there's lots of different places that it can go. And uh, one of the places it might go <laughs> is I may rehome it to you. Um, I may have some kind of, um, I don't want to use the, the G-I-V-E-A-W-A-Y-A-W-A-Y. <laughs> I can't even spell it word um, apparently it triggers uh, bots <laughs> that leave things in your comments <laughs> so we don't want to trigger any bots but it's possible that some of that yarn will get rehomed to you my friend <laughs> so um, keep following along the series so that uh, it, you're there when that opportunity comes around Okay, so first off, we're going to take a tour of my yarn stash and uh, see what, a, get a glimpse of where it is now in the state that it's in now. Uh, we'll start there. <laughs> this is a, a bookcase that was built into the wall of this room, which was intended to be a library. And just as a bonus, there's Oscar. Oscar, say hi. Hey, Oscar. I was going to tidy it up before I did this, but I thought, no. I think you should see it just exactly as it is. I do have it organized by weight. There is uh, Vincent van Gogh, Edgar Allan Poe, and Oscar Wilde, who sit up there sharing a bottle of Crown Royal. I digress. There's a, uh, there's a knitting sheep up here. Um, this side over here is mostly my fingering weights and some organization of specialty yarns. There's a whole bunch of Madeleine Tosh. There's a bunch of Cloudborn fingering yarn over there. There's a basket of random stuff, some West Coast Yarn Company. There's a bunch of random fingering weight more random fingering weight. Um, there's some Mrs. Crosby over there. There's a basket full of mochi mochi kits and bits of yarn for mochi mochis. Um, there's a bunch of random things down there. I think there's a bulky in that Ikea bin and a few some projects and some um, gnome kits and things in there. Um, down here is a bunch of bundled projects and sweater quantities. Um, more kits and bundles. Kits and bundles, kits and bundles, and sweater quantities. Um, a bit of yarn for the couch and sweater I'm going to make someday. <laughs> and um, more projects kind of bundled up into these bags. Um, so again, I do have it this have it by weight. This basket is um, what do you call it? Uh, lace weight yarns. These are my non wool yarns, cottons, linens, etc. Um, there's a few fingering weights up there. There's some sport weight there. There's worsted. There's decay over here. So, yeah, <laughs> it's kind of organized and it kind of doesn't look too terribly terrible, but uh, it could be a lot better. Right, Oscar? Do you agree? Yeah, Oscar agrees. And down here, I have this uh, basket o oh, um, other projects, yarn that's been bundled for specific projects. Some things I've started and undone, some things I've uh, swatched for and are just waiting for me to do something else. Anyway, there's a whole um, basketful. Look at this gorgeous Shibui yarn waiting to be that. You probably can't see it. There it is. Waiting to be <laughs> that little tank. 
top for summer. I was going to knit that last summer and it didn't happen. Um, anyway, yeah, there's a grandpa sweater down there, yarn for a grandpa sweater, um, that I've been meaning to make for like, I don't know, funky grandpa sweater for like 10 years. So there's that. There is <laughs> some sock yarn in that bag down there. And these are Ikea bins of mostly leftovers from other projects. Um, this one is heavier weights in here. And this, I think, mostly has worsted weights, a lot of leftovers from other projects in there. And before I forget, I knew I had some other yarn in here. Up here, on the top of my handy dandy bookshelf, bookshelf cabinet, uh, are some IKEA shoe boxes uh, full of yarn. So I gotta go through those too. Those need to go. Okay. And that's pretty much everything there is in my immediate office area for yarn storage. Uh, but there are a few other places on this level where I keep yarn. So let's go look at those. This is the closet in our guest bedroom. And as you can see, there is a box of scraps down there. There's a box of super bulky yarn in there that is such a pretty color that I cannot give it away. And there's a bag full of old timey uh, acrylic baby yarn that someone gave to me so I could finish up some projects started by someone who was deceased and the projects were to go to a charity organization so I finished them up and now I have the <laughs> these bags of yarn that need something done with them. Anyway, they will get done. Okay, now on to our last location. It's one last location where I keep some hidden yarn and that's uh, I think that's a bin of Cascade Bulky and I have no idea what's in that bag. That might just be a bag of bags, actually. <laughs> All right, and in the same hall closet, there's one more bin of scraps in here. Okay, so that with whatever is in that bag and whatever is in that box makes up the whole stash. There it is. <laughs> That's my yarn. So um, you can see it's going to be a it's going to be a bit of work um, pulling it out and putting it all in one place. I do have a spot where I want to put it, and then uh, the the kind of fun part, and I'm really looking forward to it, is is assessing that yarn. Really trying to decide um, what's going to stay and what's going to go, and coming up with a method for that, which we will definitely talk about in in the next episode for sure. So what I want to know from you is, um, uh, you know, if you're f if you're following this and you, you please give me a thumbs up if you like it. But let me know. More importantly, let me know down in the comments uh, if you also want to curate your yarn stash this year and uh, tell me why. Um, so like, what are your reasons? I'm going to put a little poll in my community tab and you can go in there and, and take a look and, and answer those questions. But talk to me about how you feel about your yarn stash. I, I want to know, you know, if you're struggling with it or you feel guilty about it, please don't. And, uh, I also want to know, um, if you love your stash exactly where it is and how you store it, like let's share ideas about how we, uh, curate and care for and love our yarn collection. I, I kind of want to stop calling it a, a stash and more of a collection. Stash has lots of negative connotations, doesn't it? 
<laughs> Let's just stop calling it that. <laughs> Although, you know, that is, again, part of the knitting vernacular, <laughs> like I talked about before. So, um, so there we go. Um, let me know in the comments how you feel about it. And uh, next time we're going to pull it all out and um, put it on the floor. I have a spot down below where I'm going to put it and uh, we'll take a look and decide what should stay and what should go. See you then. Bye.